There we are. Hi, everybody. Hello. I'm Dan. I'm Alexis. And what are we doing today, Alexis? We're live streaming. Yes. And talking In case anybody else didn't know that. Something. <laughs> Let's show everybody what we're using to stream. All right. So we are streaming to YouTube at 1080p, 29.9 frames per second. We're using vMix Pro for uh, Pro 22, uh, where I think we're up to .0.0.67 now. Very specific. Uh, we're <laughs> streaming with PTZ Optics, uh, USB 20X, and the NDI 20X. Both those cameras. Uh, using the X-Keys mouse mat, which is holding up admirably. And we're streaming with vMix Social via Kindle Fire. So leave any comments or questions as well while we are talking. As always, we're using our X-Keys XKE 124T bar with the optional video switcher kit. And you'll notice that as I move this T bar, we'll come back to our two shot. You and me. It's magic. It's magic. <laughs> Today, the topic du jour is voila. So we are talking about the Clockwork Sport track consoles. Um, so we have four different ones here. I'll go over to the site. Perfect. So for those of you who don't know, um, Clockwork Sport is a division of PI Engineering. Uh, and it's focused on timing, judging, and scoring systems um, for like, especially swimming, track and field, that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, and so we have four different ones here. Um, most of them are either for high tech or in finish links, but you can use any of our keypads for any of the track um, timing systems. Right. We, right input here. Um, the So since PI makes X keys and we're doing this new uh, sport timing thing, we thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we get X keys that timers could use and we came up with this. We've got four different versions. Um, and high tech and finish links are pretty popular softwares in, uh, in the timing community. So we started with those two. And um, we did, I actually, um, unfortunately he's not here because swim season's starting in Michigan, but uh, Dan Urbane, uh, who is heading up the, the Clockwork Sport team, uh, did an interview with me yesterday and talking about a, one of these models, the frame tracker that he made for finish links. So I am going to show you guys that right now. Hello, everybody. I'm Dan. I'm this is Dan. Dan. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. And uh, we both work for PI Engineering. Uh, and PI Engineering has a new division uh, a sport timing division, which this guy is in charge of. So, Dan, you're new to PI, yes. but you are not new to, to sports timing. How long have you been a timer? Been timing about 10 years now, both swimming and track. And uh, one of the things we're doing at Clockwork CI, and with PI, I work with X keys a lot, the programmable controllers, and we thought these programmable controllers could be really useful to a timer. So, Dan designed this thing. Uh, guys, let me get this. And this is our, uh, we call it the... This is the uh, frame tracker for finish links. Um, this one is specific to track uh, or anything that can pass a finish line for that matter. I've got the track demo set up here today um, from a meet that we've run oh, last spring or the spring prior. I dug it out of the archives. <laughs> Um, if we want to bring that image up. We have a bunch of different designs of different um, different controllers for for other aspects of timing, but we're going to talk mm -hmm. about this frame tracker right now. Yep. I brought up an image here, for, say, from a recent meet, and, of course, it is already timed, um, but we can see here that I can draw and get my line up on our athlete, and then if I've got athletes that are close together or if this is like a championship meet or something that is essentially timing critical, I can use our, our jog and shuttle knob here. And because our picture is at a thousand frames 
per second up here. Um, when I move our line, I'm moving it a thousandth of a second as can be seen in our timing box. Oh, that mouse, yeah, that mouse is showing up. So right you there. would ordinarily have to do that with a mouse and drag that line. Yeah, I can I can use the mouse, and of course I'm hopping hundredths and tenths of seconds at, at a time. So I can usually get pretty close with the mouse, and if I'm timing either by myself or if I need to get this picture moved on and arm the next the next event. Mm -hmm. You know, time every every millisecond we pick up adds up over the course of a meet, and so I can get close, and sometimes I can get lucky and be spot right. on. Other times I need to hone in, and I can zoom in further and just make sure that I am accurate. And it looks like this one was get that she was pretty good, right so I could then it. I could then score her, and then move on to the next athlete. And again, get our jog and shuttle in and, and zero in on her on her finishing. So and for then, the novice, which I am, what you're actually doing is getting very precise finish times for all these athletes. Correct. Yep, okay. we time off the torso. Gotcha. So you'll see some athletes will finish, you know, leaning forward. They're they'll 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 throw themselves across the line like that. Yep. The other ones are just jogging through. This is a distance race, so they're tending to just jog through as we see in some of these. Mm -hmm. This girl is a little closer to a finish. Um, and of course, looks like this race has a bunch of them just jogging through, but we can use, okay, now this girl here, I see that uh, our, our final finisher, um, we certainly missed her accurate time. And so I can again zoom in, you know, I can get close with the mouse and then grab that shuttle that, wheel and yeah, and say I can also zoom in and then use our shuttle and get just precise on her. And that becomes critical if we have two athletes that are very close together, then I can use that to just, you know, accurate to the thousandth which is how I have my camera set up as we're timing to the thousandth and then only reporting to the hundredth. So the software that we're importing into will bring it in by the hundredth and then split ties. We'll see a tie on time, but the places will be accurate because of the, the images coming into the thousandth here. Gotcha. Now, um, you, you explained before we started that um, you can't really demonstrate all the keys on this one because we're using a meet that's already been timed. But if you could please just kind of walk us through the keys that you have laid out on this frame tracker. Yep. The uh, This one is designed with a scoreboard in mind. Um, and so the six keys here are meant to control that scoreboard. I, I time with a micro gate Okay. A uh, flippy panel scoreboard at the finish line. I can also tie into a stadium scoreboard depending on the model. Nice. And then uh, so I can get running time. Uh, when an athlete crosses the line and my camera is armed, if I pause that, we'll see their time uh, that the camera picked up. So we pad that a little bit because we don't want the, the, the time they see to be faster than they are, uh -huh. uh, which can cause problems with the parents. Um, <laughs> coaches understand, fortunately. Yeah. Um, for sprint races, once the gun has gone off, I'll hit finish and I get a running time on my scoreboard. And then the first athlete that crosses, their time will be up on the scoreboard and frozen. Um, and then once I start timing them in the software, that the, the, the board erases. Um, stop and refresh with multiple scoreboards. Um, if I'm talking to a stadium board and my small board, um, I can refresh all and get a running clock going again. Um, full screen mode, I, sh uh, I correct myself, that will bring our image into full screen here. Uh, if we wanna pop that, that screen back up. Um, the full screen will bring that up so I can even get uh, precision again and scroll through uh, my image as well. And I can turn that off there. And then these other two buttons on the left here are our lifesavers. Um, arm, if I've got a starter who's got a megaphone on, my start sensor typically hangs off their, their pinky or off of a clip on their, on their pistol. Uh -huh. And depending on if that sensor hits a megaphone, uh, that can start the clock. 
and I can then rearm for the appropriate start. And then I like to have my camera on instantly so you don't miss anybody if there's a conversation that happens with a coach or an athlete or a parent. Gotcha. Um, and the toggle capture lets me turn my camera on and off so that I don't get a lot of traffic through my image. Oh. Um, keeps the file sizes down. And then, of course, when you do a save, it saves quicker and you can move on. Of course, by the time the, in, the official does his instructions, I've already reset and I'm ready to go. Um, but the last three buttons here, uh, save, enter, and then the arrow, in finish links, uh, when we hit save, we're going to get the dialog box to confirm, enter. It comes up to no, and so the, the arrow key will hop it over to yes, enter, and now we're loaded our next event. Um, the buttons, because they're X keys, are fully customizable. Um, I know some of our customers have already reprogrammed and there's the key kits that we have available that you can customize any of our any of our products. So um, it's, I would say it's not a perfect design, but it's <laughs> customizable. So it's a great start uh, for a lot of timers, especially if you've got a scoreboard. Um, if you don't gotcha. have a scoreboard, I found that you know we've got five keys um, that will not apply, but can mm -hmm. then be reprogrammed. Yeah, that is like one of the best features of X keys is completely customizable. If you have a key on there that you don't use or there's a key on there you wish you had, uh, you can, it's like a Lego, you can pop that key out, pop a new one in and reprogram mm -hmm. it. Yep. And there's so many features in, in this particular software and some of our other control pads for other software that uh, the same thing that uh, we've had timers call in and say, well, what about this? And it's like, absolutely, this, that can happen. Just pick that. And, you know, get the key sets and you can do your own legends. And in the software that we provide with this, you have defined shortcuts for finish links. Finish links. High tech. Uh, yeah, the high tech meet manager, eagle eye, eagle eye. flash timing, um, meet pro. And uh, for those that use race tab, we've got the four shortcuts that race tab right. uses programmed into MacroWorks. And even if we missed something, X keys can send keystrokes. And that's really all we're doing with this is sending keystrokes. Mm -hmm. So if there's something else you need to fire off a sequence of keystrokes, you can program it right into the X keys, make a key for it. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, Dan. You're I think uh, it's a cool product and we're having good success with it. Uh, and I only see it getting better. Yeah. Thank you. And we're back. <laughs> did, uh, did you guys like that? Dan was very thorough. Very informative. Uh, so we only covered one of the four units that he developed for timing. Um, do you want to show us some more of those? Sure. Let's, let's see. Input five. And there. All right. So this is one of the first ones here. So this is for high tech. So this is all pre-printed keys that is um, to be used with high tech. You can use them for other stuff, but um, our macro works for track does allow you to drag the functions right over to these pre-printed keys um, to make it a little bit easier to run high tech. And if you're wondering why the keys are orange, the <laughs> orange is kind of high tech's theme color. So we tried to go with that. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Then. Next one, a little bit bigger here. This one is a combination of high tech and finish links, um, hence why there's orange and blue. Right. Um, and then you've got your gray uh, basic number pad over here. So same type of deal. Drag your functions over to the keys using either high tech and, or finish links if you're using either one. Um, and then you'll be able to time from there. Uh, and and next one is the one that you saw in the video. The frame tracker. The frame tracker, blue for finish links because of the logo. And then last but not least, you have to finish off on a big one. I mean, go big or go home, right, Dan? <laughs> yes, the big frame tracker. Yep, so frame tracker with finish links, and you have the high-tech keys on there as well. Same deal, drag the functions over from MacroWorks onto the keys, and you're all set to go. This was kind of a, a big project for us. We did something different. Um, <clears throat> those of you guys that know X keys know that they're really flexible, programmable. You can change 
just about anything on them. That's why we like Legos as part of our kind of culture. You can pop the keys off like Legos, move around. But for this one, we targeted some very specific software that we know is popular with the timers, and we created macros for that software and created an interface that if you want to change your keys or add keys, it's, is it drag and drop or is it, you kind of pick them out of a menu. I think uh, you kind of pick them out of a menu. Yep. So when you load up um, the macro works for track, which we need a separate one for track itself, um, it has all these functions built in, not just for high tech and finish links, but also includes um, some of the other major Those ones other as ones well. that we mentioned in the interview with Dan. Like yep. Eagle Eye is one I remember. and Meat Pro, Meat Pro I think, Pro, is another yeah, one. Like that. Uh, a couple more of those are also included. But yeah, you'll open up the functions list, pick which program it is that you're using, um, and then just drag that function over onto MacroWorks onto that specific key. Yeah, we tried to make it as user-friendly as we could for somebody that wanted to make changes. So here's our, our Clockwork Sport site. It's clockworksport.com. I'm going to overlay for that. There it goes. Yeah. Um, and you see the, the four units there. Um, you can buy them right from us. But you can also... Where did my other input go? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, here's what it looks like on the PI Engineering site if you want to buy them. We also have them listed in Amazon. So you can go here, find them, pick the one you're looking for, add it to cart. And if you're a Prime member, you get it in two days, day, something like that. Whatever yeah. you're doing. Yeah. So uh, that's her. Our kind of quick and dirty presentation on the X, X keys for Clockwork Sport. And we're going to close this out and come back and cover your questions and comments and have some more fun in the post show. See you soon. Bye. All right, it looks like they're, they've been having too much fun in the chat. Um, let's share some of these with you. Top control would be shocked. Should we call clockwork orange? You want to believe that was discussed, Tommy, in, in more than one meeting? Yeah, the first time we saw that, it was definitely very, very bright. <laughs> it wakes you up in the morning. Dietiker, I was thinking of you, sir. When I was, we were just brainstorming what we we're going to show this week. So we can't do streaming or media anymore. We need to do something different. And so here we are. And next week, we also have something a little bit outside of broadcasting. Yeah, those shirts are nice, aren't they? They're super nice. They're not thick, so I'm not sweating. You can blame Miranda for that, I believe. I believe she had <laughs> some, inf some input on it. If you're wondering where Miranda and Maggie are, they're in a tube floating down a river someplace with probably adult beverages in hand right now. With how nice the weather is right now, I wish I was too. Yeah, it's really nice outside. Meat Pro. Wow, you gave me a great idea, Tommy. We need to do one of these for butchers. Butchers yes. and, and uh, what do they call that? Chartery? Is that what they call it? The people that know. smoke meats? Something like that. I think, I think it's so. something like that. If anybody knows out there, put it in the chat. But no, Tommy, not that kind of meat. Not that kind of meat. <laughs> All right, we got a question here. Can this track race cars or boats or just track and field? Very good question. Well, I think Dan mentioned in that in our interview that basically anything that's crossing a finish line, you could set up. So um, Finish Links, the software we, we set this for, they use this amazing, expensive, high-speed camera, 1,000 frames per second. And they set it up in a direct line right across the finish line so that anything that's crossing that line, they can catch the time on. And, of course, it's coordinated with a starting gun or starting device, whatever they're using now. Um, so, yeah, you know, Jerry, if you had that finish link system and had it set up across the finish line for a car or a boat, it could absolutely work and, and time it down to the one thousandth of a second. It's a great thing about X keys. 
You don't need just one use, you can use it for multiple mm -hmm. things. We had an actual question, you can believe that. Chewing gum. No, I'm not, Tommy. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking He's about. He's just being provocative. He's trying to cause trouble. Always. Thank you, Martin. Let's see. You got They're everywhere. Jerry. They do everything. You do RC boat racing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jerry, I'm not sure, you know, so we don't make the Finish Links software. Um, that's their whole company unto themselves. But um, that would definitely work for that. I I can't tell you. Um, it's too bad Dan isn't here because he could give you some idea of how expensive the stuff is. But um, cool, yeah. Um, it, actually, if you want to send an uh, email, send it to sales at xkeys.com. Or, oh, no, send it right to Dan. Send it to sales at clockworksport.com. Where's my URL? This URL right here. Um, if you send it to sales, Dan will get it. Uh, and he can um, tell you more about that. If you do get that, that would be great to see. Yeah, we as love well to see video of that. Yeah. That would be, that would be cool. See, Jerry also said normally I... Oh, uh, sorry. That's a little glitch. Go ahead and put it back on. Okay. You're trying to test me here. Yeah. Normally, I use X keys in my office and didn't expect you to show X keys outside of an office on your show. It's a great thing about X keys. You can use it pretty much anywhere. They're everywhere. All right. Don't see any more questions unless I miss some. Go back. Anybody else have any more questions or comments? I, want, I have a question for Rudy, if he's still watching, because <laughs> I know he's in Africa right now, and I'm curious as how he is actually watching the show out there. He must have found some place with a good Wi-Fi connection. Ah, good question, sir. Next week's show... Um, we need one more thing to fall in place, and the guy promised me it would fall in place. Um, we have developed a series of road cases for our X keys because we know a lot of you guys take them on the road, take them into different venues to hook them up, and sometimes it's hard to protect them. So we've teamed up with a company, it's My Case Builder, and their site is mycasebuilder.com. Um, if all goes well, we will have one or two people from my case builder remoting in next week to talk a little bit about the cases they sell and the programs and uh, we'll have some some stuff to show you. That'll be a good one. Mm -hmm. All right, Rudy, answer your question here. First day Wi-Fi. Okay. So then Rudy, how long have you gone without Wi-Fi? <laughs> Don't tell me one day. We want to see the zebra cam. Yeah. Tommy, I wish I could clone my XK24 because I use it in so many ways. Well, I mean, you can upgrade to a 60 or an 80 key if you or want. Or you could buy another XK24. Yeah. But I want to encourage that because that would be sales. Um, also, Tommy, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. You probably are because you've been messing with it for a while. But we have something in the MacroWork software called Application Specific Programming which means you can set up a different script, different profile for your X keys in each application on your computer. And then the software looks and checks to see which application is on top or in focus. And it uses the script that you designed for that one. Um, and so you don't even have to press a switch on the X keys or anything. Just when you switch between programs, it automatically knows I'm in Photoshop now. So my move key is a V. I'm in SketchUp now. So my move key is an M and it sends the right macro. That's pretty cool that we have that. It is it's very a, handy. It is a very cool feature. Let's see here. Digger. Gun case. Gun guys. case guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now we're using it outside of gun cases. Yeah, if you go to their site and, and load up the um, defined profiles, they have a lot of them defined for guns. Martin here. Airport Wi-Fi in Bratislava isn't bad either. Oh, okay. Good to good to know. Good to know. Tommy, I'll check that out. Yes, sir. Um, another thing before I forget, Tommy. 
is aside from the application specific programming, we have, if you're using the hardware mode where you're emulating pure keyboard, we have two layers. We have a, a red and a blue layer. So again, you can set up one whole layer for something and then you have to sacrifice one key because you need a way to switch back and forth between the two layers. Uh, but then you can have a whole another layer. It's almost like, so you get what's uh, 20, 46, 46 keys plus the toggle out of, out of that 24. Just showed my X keys 24 and got top speed. <laughs> Not exactly sure what that means, Rudy, but it sounds fun. All right. <laughs> Looks like Martin's getting ready to leave. Yep. Get on a plane. <clears throat> Thanks for joining <clears throat> us. Safe travels, my friend. Yes. Uh -huh. You guys ever get a chance to spend some time with Martin Steed? Sit down and enjoy it. Okay. Dan here. Scott Blake video where he timed his electric trike. Yeah, that that was fun. That was cool. Um, if uh, you know what, I'll um, I'll dig up that link and throw it in the um, in the comments when we post this thing back up on YouTube. Um, if you haven't seen it, it is very cool. Uh, he used our switch interface and an electric eye, and he's got an electric trike, and he has a dirt track around his yard, which is like in a neighborhood somewhere. I'm not, I can't remember exactly where he is. How big is this yard? <laughs> and he's going <clears throat> in one door of his garage, out the other door, and around this track. And he has it all programmed up with an Excel spreadsheet where he's tracking his laps and his total time and everything. It's... <clears throat> It was a lot of fun. That's pretty cool. I wonder how much like time it. that actually took for him to do that. Oh, too. yeah. Yeah. And you can see he's he has a lot of fun with this tech. <clears throat> All right, Tommy. Don't tell me what it says, but X keys is neato. Your secret is safe with us. It's okay. Let's see. Yeah, it's safe with us and with the other seven, six people watching us on YouTube right now. <laughs> so it's good. All right, guys. Well, um, it's been fun, like usual. Um, I don't think we had anything else to tell them, did we, Alexis? We cover. Uh, Dan, I'm, oh, I'm kind of sad. You, Dan, you're watching the comments. Let me. Um, there was one, one other thing. Uh, the main focus of clockwork, and we were just talking about X keys here, but the main focus of clockwork is. Um, software and specifically software for timing swim meets and we have a very nice uh, piece of software out there that handles the meets um, handles all the lineups all the events all that other all that stuff and I almost forgot spiny wanted to come in here and say hello so thanks for dropping in spiny good to see you bud now was there anything else uh, Dan no one no one noticed. I'm not saying anything. Okay. Fine by me. What's uh great show. Yep. Yes, it was. Well, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Good to see you, bud. Yes, thank you. If you really want to tell him, you can tell him, but I wasn't. Oh, hold on, we got one more. Say anything. Yeah, Dieter. I do not keep it secret. <laughs> thank you, Dieter. Mm -hmm. Definitely appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, I think our work here is done. I think so. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for sticking around and having fun with us, guys. And uh, come back next week to check out the cases. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye, everybody.